Hey, what's up? I'm Mike Leisure. I'm an artist and I'm an art director. Today we'll be talking about a simple yet effective technique that you can use to add some dynamic and variety to your visual game, whether that's banners, social posts, or even ads. Earlier this year, I did a video with John Santos, and you can find that here, where we actually talked about the floating effect for your products. If you're constantly posting a single garment or product, things can get kind of boring or stale. But if you add a new element to it, it can actually help to switch it up a little bit. And here's an easy way to do that. You can shoot multiples of the same product, right? And then that helps to add a new element. You can play with composition, shape, shadows, and layouts of your clothing or product, and it makes it look really cool and interesting. Um, you can shoot a range of colors like all through it. Like if you have uh, a taupe, beige, white, gray, shoot all your neutrals, or you want to shoot all of your white product or all of your black product, it makes it look really cool, kind of creates a collection, or really gives you the holistic view of your products. So let's see how we can do that. Yep, 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 yep. Not yet. We are not shooting yet. So before you even shoot, I think what you need to do is imagine what you want it to look like. And if you can't necessarily imagine it, then I would find some references to either inspire you or help you. Now, if you do know what you're looking for, I find it also helpful to find references to what you think it should look like. That's gonna help you look for the details in how you want to light this, um, how you're gonna do your layouts. Pay attention to how the clothes are being folded, how products are being stacked, because it seems simple. You're like, oh, I look at this photo and it's like four shirts put together, and then you're like, well, how do I actually do that? It looks like it, but once you get into it, I don't think you should discount the fact that folding the clothes is an art form in itself. Setting up these products and uh, doing all that is actually so much more difficult and there's so many details that you need to focus on while you're doing it. So do your research ahead of time, make a deck. And actually here's a deck that I have and it's just really simple. It's like four or five photos per, and I might not even do these exact layouts, but when I get into the studio, I'll have something to reference if I get stuck and then something to help talk to my team about if I have one, which I don't. So it's just gonna be me, myself and I. After you found your references, I would actually look at where these assets are gonna go when they're done. Are they gonna go into a banner? Are they going into a tall post? Are they going into a square? Uh, are you gonna put copy in them or text? Is this gonna be an ad? Are you gonna put like 25% off? Are you gonna say the new collection is available? Like, what are you gonna put into this and how are you gonna use it? Should it be on the left side? Should it be on the right side? These are things that if you don't think about ahead of time and you go into and shoot, then you end up trying to solve it in post, which uh, is doable, but it's also nicer to just have the assets that you need. And you always want to plan ahead so that you're able to be as tactical and as efficient as possible. To do that, I would look at the criteria that you have and then create a list of shots that you need while you're in there. And then even before then, I would create a list of the details you want to hit if that's something that you want to focus on. Uh, are the shoelaces something that I should really show? Is the back heel tab something that's really important that I want people to look at? Instead of just being there and then shooting just the whole shoe, you actually have these specific things that you're like, wow, this is a cool detail that I worked really hard on and I want people to see that. Is the stitching on this amazing? Is there a hit on the sleeve that like nobody knows about? I want people to see See those things and I want it to be important. Maybe it's not the full center of the frame, but like as I'm folding the clothes, should I make sure that that's visible? Probably, yeah. So those are things that you should focus on, make a list of, and make sure that you hit when you're in the studio. Um, a lot of times too, if you don't want to do this, that's honestly, that's fine, but you're just going to end up spending more time in the studio. And if you have to rent one, then you're going to have to spend more money. If you have the space and you have time to experiment, that's great. Do your thing, go in there and have fun. But if you can plan ahead, highly recommend it. Oh man, you're going to hate me because we keep talking about let's shoot, let's shoot, but we're not ready yet. I am a firm believer in preparing ahead of time. So before you even get in the studio, if you can, Steam your clothes, lint roll all your stuff, lace up your shoes if you need to, get a brush, brush your suede, get your leather all nice, tuck your laces back, put in the fillers like if you need to because that is gonna help you so much when you're on set and then especially in post because if you have little pieces of lint, which there's gonna be most of the time, you can't get these things perfect but it's so much less work if you do it in camera than doing it in post. I'm telling you, it'll save you 
hours of time. Seems like a few minutes, five minutes per post or per photo, but you add that up and it actually becomes a lot of time. Unless you have someone retouching your stuff and you wanna pay for that, that's fine. But a lot of us, one man, band man, you gotta do it yourself, so take care of your stuff ahead of time and you won't have to deal with that in post. All right, so what I did was I rented a studio out in Los Angeles, FD Studio, and I booked it for two hours. And we're gonna go in there and we're gonna try to shoot this as quickly as possible. I went in and I quickly, I just grabbed a table, threw a V-flat on it, and I dropped the backdrop down so that I'd have a space to work with. Uh, I got an overhead rig with um, this piece that allows you to shoot with the camera facing down. So I set that up, I put up the lights. I have a gigantic Octabox that's gonna help the light be soft. That's a large light source. I put it at about three quarters of the power. And then I put a bounce on the other side to help uh, lighten up the shadows. Pretty simple what I have going on here. It's a setup where I'm tethering to the computer so I can actually see it on a big screen uh, as opposed to just looking at the tiny screen there or if I'm shooting overhead it's hard to see what I'm shooting so you can either do that through a phone or an iPad but I chose to do it on the computer just because I like doing that in, in that workflow. The challenges with that though is you're gonna have to set it up you need the correct cables you need the right programs uh, and figure out your tethering situation but that's up to you. First up, uh, we have these shoes that Eric Payne loaned out to us. Man, I'm just like hyped that he let us do this because his shoes are so amazing. They're all handmade in Los Angeles and he like stitches these himself. He, he gets the material, he puts it all together, really gives it this high fashion artisan feeling. And, and like, I love the uh, heightened sole on it. It just has this like, wow look to it and i think a lot of his references too uh was like back to him skating uh in the earlier days and like like wearing vans so you can see a lot of that influence but like he takes it to a completely different level um really cool so today yeah we're gonna be shooting uh those and uh yeah i was having some trouble with this because the thing is a lot of times you you have a vision and you want to shoot a certain way but then once you get there again you're gonna have to experiment and then problem solve and that's literally like every single thing that happens um it's like what this game is all about, right? We have these ideas and then you figure out how to do it. And then along the way, there's always gonna be those unknown variables. Next, what I ended up doing was shooting these lavender hoodies. Lavender is currently a boutique style streetwear brand. And they recently did a collaboration with Fruits Magazine. And that's actually what this hoodie's from. You can see on the front here, we've got this uh, fruits lavender uh, hit and it's like a 3d puff print it looks pretty cool it's nice raised um, and it's really the color is like really popping so I want to see if I can try to do something with that and like bring that out uh, I tried out a bunch of things here as you can see where I folded them and then I put them on there and like I'm trying to create these different compositions but I'm looking for some depth and texture really and these are the things that I ended up with all right, so a friend of mine, his name is Izzy Encore. He's an actor, comedian, uh, R&B, jazz singer who hails from Chicago, but he's LA based. His project Soulful Savage recently came out and then I helped him design his merchandise. So uh, he allowed us to use his long sleeve tees, which has the hit on the, on the left side of the chest. And then he has the back graphic and uh, that's like the cover and then it's got a track list on it. And then we have the Soulful Savage hats, which are embroidered on a snapback. These were also difficult because of the way the, the graphic on the back was and then where the hit on the chest was. It's, I'm trying to show all these and I wanted so much more. Even if you, if you looked at the deck that I created, I wanted way more shirts, but I only had four to work with. So I'm trying to make this work and then maybe I can pull something off in post here. And then last, I have these hats that I was shooting. And again, I kind of just started to run out of time. So I wasn't able to get the shots the way that I wanted. But if in post I can fix this, and here's the thing, sometimes you gotta do the post. You gotta really edit that and make it look good. But if you don't have to, it would be even better. So I probably should have booked the studio for more time uh, and then I would have had more to do. But again, unforeseen, unknown variables. <laughs> not working. But we gotta work with what we got and we made it happen. What I wanna do now is take this all into post and then we're gonna select each of these parts 
or we're gonna select the best photos and then see what we can use. Again, I was super rushed when I was in the studio, so we're gonna see what's usable and then kind of explain the process in how I'm choosing these and then where I think they're gonna go. Okay, so I'm just gonna go on record and say that I am not a photographer. And I say that because there's this common misconception that I am, I know how to work a camera, but you just gotta really gotta respect the craft and the people who actually shoot. So you look at these and then be like, uh, I don't know about them. But uh, for me, I'm, I'm gonna make it work. I'm gonna find all the good pieces in here. I'm looking at the uh, details. I'm looking at how the clothes are folded. And then I really want to figure out which ones are the best. So you'll see me flipping back and forth between these. Some of them I'm gonna use, some of them I won't. And the ones that I do like, I'm hitting command six. And that's the one that pops up with the red flag. And that shows me which ones I do like. As soon as that's done, I'm gonna come through and then I'm going to grab all the ones that I selected. And then I'm gonna put them into a selects folder, as you can see here. Okay. Cool. And then as soon as we're done with that, we're gonna take it over to Lightroom and then we're gonna go ahead and import these. All right, as soon as it's imported, let's go to develop. I'm gonna go over it really lightly. Uh, I'm basically just trying to even everything out. I want the lighting to be pretty good. I want the white balance to be the same on all of them so that when I work on them, I don't have to like switch too much. Um, so I'm setting the exposures, I work with the highlights, the contrast, sometimes I dehaze it. And it, and it really comes down to your taste and what you like to do. And uh, here, I think what I'm noticing is on the right side, it's a little too bright. So what I'm gonna do is actually drop on a graduated filter. And that is gonna help me add a little bit more light. And it's just like, again, evens it out. Anything that I messed up while I was shooting, I'm trying to fix now and then that's like even before we get into photoshop because these are kind of light broader strokes that i can do without getting too in depth with each one of them and then we're going to run through this as quickly as we can and in each photo set is going to be different because just the different lighting and then we have the different colors of the clothes you're going to want to accentuate certain things for these I wanna boost up the red a little bit more so you can really see those. And uh, the hats, the shadows here I really like. Uh, that was pretty fun. And then we're just gonna make sure that these are all consistent and they look good. And then we'll go to the exporting phase and I'll put them in the right folder, export those. And as soon as that's ready, what we're gonna do is actually take it over to Photoshop, but I like to use bridge so that I can view the photos as I'm working. I think it's just a lot faster than using uh, Finder. And then, okay, so the situation here is that I shot these way too quick. I think I took on more than I could, I could handle because I wanted to show you guys a really wide um, range of products so that, you know, like different viewers, like we have people who sell shoes, people who sell uh, clothes and like so many more things. So I didn't want to make it just one thing about clothes. And I wanted to show you the wide array of things that you could do. So I was like, you know what, let's try this, right? And then as soon as I did it, I was like, wow, I just disrespected all the people who <laughs> take photos, who come in here and style clothes. Cause I was just like, I got cocky with it, but you know what, we're in here now. And so what I'm doing is I'm gonna show you quickly how I retouch these and then uh, how we add certain things to make it look better if we messed up. For instance, this is a, a technique I use to add a colored background and then I put it on multiply so that you can actually still see the shadows and then I fill in all these details and then I make it look better than it was shot. Ideally, it would be shot better in camera, but it was not. So here we are. Uh, again, for the rest of this video, what I'm gonna be doing is gonna be showing you everything really quickly. I might highlight on a couple things, but it's, it's turning into a really long video. So I wanna do something that's not overbearing, but enough for you guys to see. So if you do wanna see more, leave some comments below and I, I can release these specific ones as full tutorials and uh, go into depth about that. But right now it's gonna be very surface level. Back to it, we have these uh, shoes and I'm dropping this here, showing you how a banner could be made. Uh, this technically would be done on your website, but I'm gonna show you in here just so you can kind of see what it looks like. Let's drop in the CTA, drop down that stroke, and then we're gonna bring it in. Shop now, baby. Let's get that, all right? Um, then, 
as soon as we get that all together, I wanna show you how it goes into like a four or five post or something a little bit taller and then how we can drop that in. I'm using artboards here to show you the wide range of everything in one go. Um, and then this one's gonna be an ad. So I size this up and then I'm gonna grab a piece from the other one, the hand sewn bespoke. And we're gonna drop that in there and boom, that turns into a little ad or another social post if you wanted it in a square. For the lavender ones, I'm taking pretty much the same block up for the copy and then I'm dropping in these different variations for you to see how this looks. And I'm gonna clean up the background a little bit and make it all fit. Now the thing is, I like this and this is fine, but I really like to go into the liquify tool and then tighten up all these corners because I just think like a little more rounded off just makes it feel clean and then you'll see those kind of wrinkles there that need to be worked. Uh, well, I guess they don't need to, but I really like to because those little details mean a lot to me, especially since I wasn't fixing them in the shot. I'm gonna do it now. Uh, I also think it looks a little too, eh, so boom. Turn that background pink and I think this adds a lot to it because the, the graphic is pink and then it just really accentuates that all together. It just feels juicy, you know what I mean? Now I'm back in here on the liquify tool and I'm fixing this one up and just really tiny adjustments, you know what I mean? Things I, I should have done to the clothes. And then again, gonna change the color here just to make it look nice, I'm making it pink, fix up the background. And then I wanna add some copy to this. So the Decora logo hoodie uh, is what this is called. And for your ad, you might pick something else, but I just wanna talk about it a little bit, have some of the details, have it designed. And that's the overall look of everything for the lavender hoodies. And for Soulful Savage, we have these long sleeves that we were shooting and I'm just really fixing this up because I wanted it to look like there was more. So I just duplicated some and moved it around, I fixed one of them. And then once we fix up the background, I'm, I'm doing the same color changing thing. This one's gonna be gray. And then for like, if you're on your website, you can change your CTAs to different colors. And this kind of helps you to like mock it up and see what it looks like beforehand too. With the snapbacks, this was pretty easy. Uh, I just like the photo was a lot nicer already to begin with. That one's pretty cool. This one's a quick one I just dropped in and then that's ready to be posted. And then this one, I kind of want to make something that's a little more brand oriented. So I'm changing the color of the background. And then what I'm going to do is drop the Soulful Savage logo right in the middle. And I think that's going to help elevate this post a lot. I don't like the red too much. The gray is looking a little more, yeah, I like that. All right, so we went through a lot today and uh, I hope you found it entertaining. I hope you found some valuable information there. Um, we talked about shooting e-commerce photography and I know there's a lot of comments, a lot of questions on that other video. We will be getting to those. But today, I want you guys to like, comment, subscribe, leave your questions down below, turn your post notifications on. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Keep it proper. Thank <music> you.